today we're going to be installing some DravTech shorts into the G-Speed. Stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to the video. So today, as I say, we're going to be looking at uh, installing some DravTech short shocks uh, from Deluxe Fab uh, into my G-Speed uh, Low CG. It's been a while since we've done a video on the Billy Dragger, so it's had a few other changes. I'm going to just quickly run through those first. And then what we're going to do is assemble and install the rest of these shocks. Uh, here's one I made earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. Uh, in terms of the changes that we've made, first one, most obvious one, is the body. Uh, we've not got the power wagon body on there anymore. This is the uh, J Concepts Creeper. So it's the kind of the, the, it's the creep body, uh, basically without the, the bed at the back. So I'm still using my um, bed that I designed for the power wagon because that still fits nicely. Now I'm not sure I'm massively impressed with this body shell. It's it's pretty flimsy and as you can see I mean it's had it, it has suffered some pretty hefty knocks uh, but as you can see there it's kind of taking not taking it very well. Uh, but it's okay for now and it does the job and I've still got the um, I do still have the power wagon one available if I need it. Uh, I've changed the servo, so I've taken the servo out of my gatekeeper build, done a bit of a swap over there. Um, so this is the EcoPower uh, servo that I had in there. I will put links uh, to these in the description so you can have a bit more of a look. Uh, and with that I've also put a uh, smaller battery and mounted it up front. So previously I had the battery tray here, just in the standard uh, sort of element battery tray, uh, but now I've designed and uh, printed just a little tray there uh, that the battery sits in um, with a bit of inset velcro so it sits as low as possible uh, i've put a strap around it just i don't know whether i need that or not probably not to be perfectly honest um, but that's now in place there uh, the receiver which needs some more tape on it because it's come loose is now on a um, electronics tray along with the button uh, the power power button uh, and the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed there's no ESC and that's because I've put the quick run fusion that I put originally in the Ecto that's now in the G-Speed. I did sort of cheat a little bit when I installed this because what I basically did was swap out the entire gearbox uh, so at the moment this has got the plastic gears in it that came with the Ecto and the metal gears that came with the builders kit that I built the G-Speed with are now in the uh, are now in the Ecto so We'll see how we get on with those. I might change that back again, but you know, it is actually quite a bit of weight that those those metal gears come up with. So if I don't need to change them back, I might just keep the plastic ones. The other thing I had to do, which was a change uh, when I made when I put the creeper body on there, uh, is I've had to take down the sliders that come with the G speed. So these previously were quite square, um, but I've just sort of taken those down. I basically did that with an electric sander. Uh, and just sort of sanded those down. They're pretty solid prints, uh, so I'm not seeing lots of kind of infill and layer lines in there. Uh, and that's just rounded the edges off a little bit. Uh, and obviously I've added some scale accessories, just don't know why, uh, just for the fun of it really. So a little bit of a rack on the back there with the sand ladders and um, a little wooden box in the bed, uh, just for looks really, more than anything else, made that out of uh, lollipop sticks as we call them in the UK, popsicle sticks you'll call them in the States if you're over there. Uh, and that's it really, that's basically the changes that we've made. Uh, I still do need to shorten that battery wire, it's far too long, uh, but there we go. Uh, so let's get down to business in terms of the DravTech shocks. Now I have, like I say, had my eyes on these for quite a while, but they are buttery smooth, they're really nice. Um, Hopefully they're coming across and you can see those okay, but they are super nice, smooth shocks. Uh, and this one that I've built so far, uh, I've built with 350 oil in it, uh, 350 CST. That may be too thick, uh, so I might need to buy some just some thinner oil, because uh, that rebound is quite slow, but we'll see, we'll see. So these are the extra soft uh, shocks, um, which I think will probably be okay because my G-Speed rig is obviously quite light. Uh, there's not a lot on there uh, to weigh those down. And now I'm using those smaller 1300 batteries instead of the uh, 2200s that I used to use. Uh, that's 
even more the case now but they're really nice and smooth um, very pleased with those so far it is basically uh, a custom shock these days now they used to be essentially a straight copy of uh, the Traxxas shocks but I think that's changed a little bit now but uh, as you can see from the picture uh, they do come with uh, Traxxas rebuild kits as part of it uh, and it's those that give you all of things like the um, the little uh, washers and the bladders that go in the kit and all the, the circlips to hold them together so don't lose that definitely going to need that I say I've already built up two of these uh, but the other two are here ready to go I've already unpackaged them as you can see and everything you need is there now in the kit you get 12 of these uh, rubber o-rings don't be concerned uh, when you finish building if you build these that you've got all of those left over because they are essentially for adding uh, preload to the springs if you want to add preload so you load those onto the shock body like this and then where the spring seats They've tangled up. Oh no, there we go. Where the spring seats, then you've added some preload into that shock. Uh, otherwise, they will sit that bit further on. So, if you want to add preload to your shocks, that's how you can do that. So, there's a bit of a tuning option there. I'm going to go without that initially. So, I'm going to pop these all back in the bag so they're not in the way. Uh, so, the shock all I'm using is the Core RC uh, 350. Uh, which I think is th classed as 30 weight, not sure, but 350 CST. Um, the one thing that doesn't come in the kit uh, is this screw, so don't be worried if you're seeing it on the table and you've bought some of these and, and you're missing this bit. Uh, that's not a problem, you'll see what that's for in a bit. Uh, and then everything else uh, is in there already. So we've got the rod ends, uh, ball connectors for those rod ends, and these little fellas here are a spacer that goes onto the uh, shock shaft, it stops the shock bottoming out in the body uh, and means that there's always just a little bit of oil on either side of the, uh, the piston. Let's get down to building them. So the first thing to do obviously is to open up your rebuild kit. Uh, do this carefully because there are a couple of spare bits in there but not loads, so you don't want to be losing these uh, these washers and what have you. So let's just take that off there. Make sure there's nothing in the top of there, and then we'll take the instructions out carefully because there are bits that are going to be stuck inside there potentially. And we'll set those to the side because we don't need them. So there we can see the bladder and lots of little washers and grommets and another bladder and these are all the bits that you're going to need to build the shock. So if you've already watched the assembly video from Deluxe Fabs he doesn't use any green slime or anything on them he says there's no need to uh, they won't leak they're all good. I'm going to use some anyway uh, because I don't think it's going to do any harm so why not I bought the stuff may as well use it uh, so if you've got some of this already, this is uh, Element uh, Green Slime, there we go. So first thing to do is assemble the shaft and piston, uh, and that is a couple of circlips. Easy way to do these, uh, get them started, he says. They are quite fiddly if you've got big fingers like I have. Once that's started, you can just push them down on the table, but I tend to just Put a pair of pliers, a little pair of needle, no, needle nose pliers on them, get that into place. Then we take one of the black pistons and pop that in. Uh, sometimes they are a bit stiff, that's fine, don't worry about that. Uh, and then we want another one of the circlips. And this is where you will need either a knife or some pliers just to pinch that on. There we go. So that's clipped into place, nice and easy. Uh, and I'm going to put the spacer on for now so I don't forget later. To assemble the shock, uh, you're going to need the bits from the uh, the Traxxas rebuild kit. 
uh, and they go in in the following order. So you first of all want the small white washer, and drop that into place. Then one of the blue grommets, uh, if you want to put a bit of green slime on there you can. I am rebuilding this shock after a camera faux pas. Uh, so there's already a little bit of green slime on there which is fine. I don't want a lot, just a tiny bit. Uh, then the white thick washer or spacer. Another blue rubber grommet. And then the white larger or clear transparent larger washer on the top. Okay, and they should all sit down there nicely. Then we're going to put the circle the blue circlip, oh, sorry, the black circlip on the top. Uh, and I tend to put that on the desk, put my finger down on it so that it's already kind of pushing into the the back side, the complete side at the back. And then with either your circlip pliers or in my case your side cutters just kind of pinch that in and you should feel it all clip down into place. Make sure it's all seated properly on the inside and there you go, simple as that. It's not difficult really and you don't really need specialist circlip pliers. You can get away with those side cutters and that can just drop now into place. Okay and that feels nice and smooth. If you're worried that that's got a lot of resistance on it, don't worry at this point, um, particularly if you haven't used green slime, um, as soon as you've got some oil in there and that lubricates that shock shaft a little bit, that will be nice and smooth, or should be anyway. Uh, so then we're going to install the spring and the spring cup. And this is obviously where having some shock pliers is handy. They're not very expensive, they're definitely worth having if you're going to get into this sort of building and rebuilding shocks definitely get some of these. I'll put you a link in the description to these ones uh, which I think I either got off Amazon or Make It Build It but uh, we'll find we'll find a link for those. And then just by hand we're going to thread on the rod end keeping it nice and square and then just thread that into place until you've used up all the threads but no more. So as soon as those threads disappear, you're done. There we go. And that's the bottom half of our shock done. Next job uh, is to pop some oil in there. So I'm going to fill that up reasonably full, but not quite all the way at this stage. Uh, three quarters probably. Uh, and just kind of gently cycle the piston a couple of times and you can see, maybe see there, all the air bubbles coming out from underneath that piston. Which means the levels have dropped a bit. So top, pop a bit more in there, give it a couple of taps. Uh, and then generally you want to set that aside for a few minutes and just let that um, settle, let the air bubbles come out. Uh, generally you're going to be building these all together uh, rather than one at a time like I am. So what I would say is uh, build your first one up to this stage, set it aside, let those bubbles, build the next one, keep setting them aside. By the time you get back round to the first one that all those air bubbles should have gone. So at that point we're just going to top up a little bit more oil in there so it is just under the the top. Uh, we can put the bladder in place and you're going to lose a bit of oil here when you do this uh, and that's good. Although I put just a bit too much in there so I'm losing too much oil. And then using your button head screw uh, just push that down into place and then just compress the shock a little bit and then when that releases that will just suck that bladder into place uh, you will get some oil come out, use that as a just to lubricate that bladder a little bit. And that's pretty solid in there now. Let's 
Get that little wipe pass, that's going to be impossible to tighten. And then for the shock cap, uh, you just need three pieces, which is this sort of countersink screw, uh, the rod end and the cap. Now don't worry too much if that doesn't look like, in this case it does actually fit quite nicely. Um, but if it looks like that's not going to fit and it sort of sits on the top, because obviously that's a hex and that's circular, don't worry about that. Just pop the screw into place underneath. And then with a, an electric driver of some sort, or you could do it by hand, but obviously easier with an electric driver, uh, just carefully drive that into place. And what that will do is that will just suck that rod end down into the cap as it goes along. Now you might see that it shaves off a little bit of that hex plastic as it goes in, that's fine. Uh, and then just, I tend to just put the driver through it just to make give it that extra bit of um, torque so I can torque that down. Obviously don't over tighten that. You've got to be really careful not to over tighten that and strip out the threads. Once you've got your shock cap you can then get your shock again and hopefully that's all stayed in place nicely. And just carefully pop that over the top. Try not to knock the bladder as you're going in. And there we go. Tighten that down. As tight as you can by hand. And then you might want to just, uh, using your shock pliers, just very carefully give that a bit of a tweak down, but not too tight. And there we go. We have a nicely built up, ready to go shock that is buttery smooth. And it does come with ball ends. Uh, so again, you'll need your shock pliers for those really. Uh, you can get away without it, pressing it onto the table, but again, Shock pliers, definitely a good investment. Make these jobs super simple. No drama. And no ball ends pinging across the floor. And impossible to find and getting lost. He says, dropping one. And that's it. Four nicely assembled shocks, lovely and smooth. Uh, I'm going to get those onto the rig and they'll be ready to try it out. And there we go. Some super smooth Dravtech shorts installed onto the G Speed, assembled nice and easy, went together really well. Uh, hopefully, I've done a good job and they won't leak. So, all we need to do now is go out and test it. That will be in another video for another day. Uh, I'm probably not going to get out for a few days to be able to test that, so I'll get this video out for now. And, uh, and then as soon as we get out with this bad boy on the rocks, uh, we'll pop some video up so you can have a look. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.